feel like David today who heard Goliath defy the armies in the kingdom of God. And he wouldn't stand for it. In my opinion, hell made a concerted effort through the president this past weekend to back the church down. To back good people um, who just work hard and they, they, they want things for the family, but they don't like how things are going. And uh, in the speech, he tried to intimidate, threaten, subtly in some ways, not so subtle in others. It was very hate-filled, and it fired a shot across the bow, so to speak. But that cannot stand, and it will not stand. It is going to backfire because we will not back down. We will only get louder. And with Holy Spirit's help today, I'm going to try to present a kingdom of heaven perspective of our, our times now, a kingdom of heaven perspective. For sure, we cannot allow fear to set the narrative. The church, the true church, is not here to be silent. The, weapon, the weaponizing of our government institutions against its citizens has always been the tactic of weak leaders. It has failed time and time and time again, and it's going to fail again. Another thing is for sure, Holy Spirit has been preparing us for this attack against who we are and our freedoms. Holy Spirit has been preparing us, and He's been preparing us very well for the last three years or so, and then the last few months especially. And He's going to continue to, to talk to us. He will continue to provide answers. But the blame game that demon-possessed minds play, blaming others for their own depravity, will be exposed as the bile that it is. God's going to show it for what it is. For in fact, I have it on good terms. God is about to have a say in the matter. In fact, I'm told Christ loves the ecclesia, his real church, his bride, and he gives himself to protect it like a husband does his bride. And as we looked at just a few weeks ago now, let's find out if the king meant it. Let's find, let's find out if he can back his church. Our trust must not waver. The king has our back. His kingdom has our back. The Godhead has our back. Angel armies have our back. But I feel that we must pause and see a perspective of our times that is biblical. We must look at what Holy Spirit has been telling us, what He is about to tell us, uh, open to that. And we must allow God to define us, not our enemies. We must reset who we are. It's very important that we understand corporate generational purposes in the kingdom of God. We are one generation of believers in a long succession of believers. And each one of those generations had unique purposes, callings, missions, responsibilities that are provided by Almighty God. Yes, there are many purposes that are the same, but it is not cookie cutter. There are individual specific things God calls a generation to that, that he may not call another generation to in quite the same way. Acts 13, 26, the Amplified Bible tells us, 
David served the purposes of God in his own generation and then fell asleep or then he died. God had purposes for David's generation and David served those purposes. Purpose is the Greek word boule. It means projects or it means intentions. It means things done as a result of deliberation or counsel. It means things purposed based on reflection or deep thinking. It means things thought through. Boule, you thought it through. Boule references carrying out God's will. There are things God thinks through, deliberates on, reflects on, to provide intentions for every generation. David served God's intention for his generation. Also, Acts 17 and verse 26 tells us, God ordains our time and the place of our habitation. That is, he, he determines what generation we are born in. Which one? It's not some heavenly lottery that you, know, you, pick, in, you pick out, sorry, dark ages. No. It's personally God chosen. Why? Because he's going to put intentions, designs, talents, giftings, traits in you that fit that generation. David could have lived now, but he was made to to do God's purposes in a centuries ago generation. The apostle Peter, he could have lived now, but he, he was made for service in the very first ecclesia. His talents, his abilities, his worldview, his family heritage, his lifestyle thrived then. The apostle Paul could have lived now, and I'm sure that he could have, have done many great things, but he was made for a different time and a different place. Again, much of their purposes were the same, but there were unique intentions for each one and their times. Our grandparents' generation was a bit different than ours. Church, 50, 60, 70 years ago, was actually respected in our nation. Christianity was respected. Even by those who didn't claim to be Christians, there was a respect for the church. Now that has changed. Now the response of our generation has to be different in how it functions. And our great God is the one who deliberates on how we do that. And through Holy Spirit, communicates that. Now, other things are required of the ecclesia that were not required 100 years ago, 50 years ago, even 30 years ago. In other words, we cannot do things how past generations did them. We are a, a functioning spiritual kingdom. It's a, a kingdom that is alive on the earth now, and a functioning living ecclesia or kingdom must, it must have present realities, present orders, present instruction. We got to do the purposes of our God that Holy Spirit provides for our generation. Some is the same, but not all is the same. Though the central message of the gospel of the kingdom is the same. Most certainly then, God made you and everyone watching, or everyone that will watch, God made you for now. The proof of that is you're alive now. He ordains your time and the place of your habitation. He made you with certain things inside of you, unique for your generation. Traits, likings, 
giftings that are not completely the same as other generations. And God's wisdom and Holy Spirit is now wanting to draw out, draw that out of you so that in some way you serve His purpose in your generation. It is also very clear that God builds His purposes on the shoulders of previous generations. That is also true with the ecclesia. He builds on purposes He gave other ecclesias. Each ecclesia has unique assignments reflected on by the Godhead, communicated by the Holy Spirit for the times and then assisted by angels. And he made you to fit those ecclesia purposes for this generation. Meaning the gifts that are in you are best suited to help work his plans and his purposes in today's New Testament church. Your, your purpose, your portion... Your portion matters. No matter the size, big, small, in between, it matters. Each piece matters. It was God planned that way. All service matters. Your prayers matter. Your agreement of faith matters. Your faith decrees matter. Your voice in these times matter. Even your worldview matters. Your stand for truth matters. How you live your life is a visible representation of his kingdom. At least it, it can be. You matter. You're made to be engaged kingdom citizens right now. It's why you were given life now. And within that understanding, it is vitally important that we embrace his callings, his projects, his intentions, his deliberations concerning our times. Because it is, it is now our turn to carry out his will. It's our turn to affect the planet. It's our turn to represent King Jesus. It's, it's our turn to be his voice on planet earth. It's our turn to stand for what is right. It's our turn to stand against what is wrong. It's our turn to tell dictators no. It's our turn to tell, to tell demon-possessed leaders no. We will not go for your cause. We will not stand for your craziness. And we will not bow to your idols. God's ways are best. And we, we will serve them. We are not here to be bullied. We will not be intimidated by your threats. Your arrogant, pride-filled lust for power will not back us down. Your lies will not deceive us. We will not eat your salad of lies. As the prophet Hosea told the leaders in his time, I will not eat your salad of lies. Your hypocrisy doesn't impress us. It disgusts us. We're not scared little kittens you're used to dealing with. Our lion king Jesus has been feeding and growing and maturing other lions in his tribe and we haven't been trained to run. He has put fight for right in the soul of his ecclesia, his remnant. Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, King Jesus makes this statement to the apostle Peter. On this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The word, the Greek word he used for church is, of course, ecclesia. It's used 113 times 
referring to a ruling and reigning body made up of worshiping heirs. It's made up of worshiping heirs. It's a body of believers that will align themselves with what God says, with the Word of God. It, it teaches God's Word and refuses to compromise. It prophesies based upon the Word of God. It is a church that is involved in government. I know hireling shepherds teach it different, but the king says, ecclesia, a ruling government body in the spirit realm that affects the natural realm. It is involved in government. Ecclesia involved itself in the statutes and in the laws of the land. It was involved in who the judges would be. It was in, involved in who government leaders would be. It was involved in the societal issues and the cultural issues. It is not a passive, stay out of things body. No, the king gave the definition. No other definition really matters to me. It's a body of active believers in Jesus Christ. Binding things that need bound. Loosing things that need loose. The idea is it decides what's lawful, what's unlawful, what is to be permitted or not permitted. It is a body of believers that worships King Jesus and reigns with him in this life. As the Apostle Paul said in Romans 5, 17, in this life. Not the next one, this one. Obviously, we're going to reign with him in the next one. These are constant definitions of the ecclesia given by Jesus himself. They have been the definitions of the true New Testament church in every generation from Acts chapter 1 verse uh, 1 on. But also... And this is a very big also, and we need to hear this now. Jesus told the ecclesia in the book of Revelation, listen to what Holy Spirit is saying to the ecclesia, the church. Not just what he has said, obviously we're going to pay attention to that, but listen for what he is saying. Listen, listen, why? Because obviously there are present purposes that he is going to give us present purposes. Pay attention to what he is saying. Listen closely to what he is saying. Pray it. Decree it. Make it a functional part of what you do. I feel that, I feel this for us right now. We must pay attention to what Holy Spirit has been saying to us and what he is presently saying. We've got to press into that. We've got to ponder that. We need to really get it. He's been talking to us for weeks about. You are moving into a war season through, through the midterms. Your way of life is going to be challenged. We must pay attention. Two weeks ago, when Holy Spirit said he was now sending the seraphim order of angels. One of the most powerful orders that we know of anyway. To assist the king's ecclesia. When that happened, everything inside of me went on high alert. Pay attention. The war must be escalating in some way. Pay attention to what he has just said to you, given to you, promised you, ponder it. This can, this can cause dramatic effect. The war season is, is, is amping up. This is something for our times. Think on it, meditate on it, listen. Pay attention to this. Not on other things that are happening. Heard so many crazy things after, after that speech. People were saying, well, I knew we shouldn't probably get involved. Now everything's going to be a mess. You, we, we, all we've done is make the devil mad. Who cares? 
Do we, is that the standard? What does the king say? What does he like? Hmm. The Holy Spirit's given us insight of what's happening in the spirit realm, moving into the natural realm right now. Pay attention. The Godhead is talking to us. Purposes are being revealed. Strategies are connecting in our times. Plans are, are, are unfolding. God's deliberating on things for our times. He's revealing intentions He has in mind for us. He's, he's got projects that he, he has thought through. That's exciting and that's hope-filled. And we need to pay attention. We can now, we can now win huge victories. It's been set up for us if we engage, if we fight for what we believe. Holy Spirit's been teaching us so much for our times. And it must be more than just information. It must become practical, functioning revelation we are living in. We are in a special god planned moment right now, a special God-planned moment for our generation. This teaching needs to be put with this. This vision needs to be applied here. This dream, this prophetic word needs to be put into the revealing of what Holy Spirit is saying. If we will stay engaged... Purposes will unfold. Victory plans will activate, assisted by angel armies. We're in a moment that's requiring us to be wide awake and very active in our faith. Now, I especially feel today, I especially feel Father, Papa, Papa God, wants to provide his perspective to us, which is going to give us great awareness for our times. It'll bring clarity. I feel like Father wants to give us his perspective today. I felt the Father's heart all week. In fact, there were times when it was so close that all I could do was weep. It's unusual. I've been hearing... Thoughts of a father filtering into what Holy Spirit has been and is saying to, to give us perspective. It's been quite unusual. I don't think I've ever heard things in the spirit realm quite the way I begin to hear them this week. The place of the ecclesia, the, the place in God's heart for his people was given great clarity. And so much of what Holy Spirit's been saying to us, it has become very clear that we're being called to something that's just beyond ourselves. It's beyond who we are naturally. We're invited into God's wisdom ways that are far beyond what we can do in the natural but we're being invited to partner with King Jesus and with Holy Spirit at an incredible level. We're being challenged to participate in kingdom business at a far greater level. We're being challenged to change things that appear to some as impossible, though they are not. I am, you are, everyone watching online, you are too. It's like a mobilization, some kind of mobilizing has begun. In the spirit realm, something like a deployment of some sort ha has, has begun. I, I, I can feel it. It's intrinsic. It's, it's supernatural. We are moving into supernatural times more so than we ever have before. 
And there's a divine energy that, that is now stirring. And within that, greater possibilities for you as a kingdom heir is now activating through God's wisdom. If you're born again, you are a kingdom heir. And that identity, that identity is something we must focus on. We've got to get that. All of what Holy Spirit's been saying releases through that. The ecclesia's success depends on that. Real change in, in our nation and in our world depends on it. We must know our real identity. It's imperative. We, we must embrace a mindset of who we are. We, we must, it must become our, our conscious awareness. Who we are must be so ingrained into us that we act like it, we talk like it, we live like it. It, it cannot just be feel-good information put off till we get to heaven. No, we must embrace our new birth realities. We must think born again realities. Of course, we can be thankful for our natural family's identity, our ethnic or racial identity, our national identity. There is great value in, in that, but, but that is not our, our complete identity. We have additional real identity, having been born of God. Remember the past teachings. His DNA is in us. His spora is in our spirit, literally at the new birth. And what happens in the earth realm is often dependent, and it is right now. It is dependent on understanding that. What happens on this planet is dependent on us flowing in that identity. Prophecies, teachings, visions, dreams are dependent on us embracing who we are spiritually, not just on who we are naturally. Because who we are naturally is too limited but who we are spiritually has potential that moves us into supernatural realms. And we must move into supernatural realms, understanding we were made for that. We were made to do that. We were made to walk with God that way. We were made to participate in a spiritual kingdom. We must understand who we are naturally ha has, has now real Identity added to it. It's inherent in us as born again ones. We are genuinely different new creatures in Christ Jesus. We must get that. Awakening, reformation, dis discipling nations, the future of our children depends on us embracing the mindset of who we are are. The world must see that now. And God is calling us through Holy Spirit's guidance time and time and time again. Be who you really are. Be who you really are. Be who you really are. Over and over, be who you really are. That's the teaching of the ecclesia. Be who you really are. And now we have entered a set time when greater possibilities for you as a kingdom heir, it is now activating towards you through God's wisdom. Something is stirring in God's womb for you right now. He has something in mind. You're an heir, you're different, you're special. You are loved beyond comprehension. And now from the, the womb of the Father come some things into the earth realm to bring things out of you and things for you that are incredible if you will embrace who you really are. 
we're moving into God and son business. God and daughter business. God and kingdom heir business. The invitation of the Father is come walk with me. Come walk with me. Come walk with me in a new way. I want to show you some new purpose. I'm merging my spirit realm with you. I'm giving you assistance. I've given no other generation. No other generation have I given the assistance I have given you. I have worked my plans, my strategies, my ways in generation after generation after generation. And now I'm working on yours. There are prophetic words, visions, dreams by the thousands that are now connecting to your moment, your generation. They are merging to flow with you in activated purpose. It's, it's your time for my plans. I have made you for this moment. I have put within you abilities to walk with me in the spirit realms built into you by the synergy of the ages, built into you by centuries of enlightenment, built into you by wisdom, passed on to you by heroes of faith, built into you by revelation, I gave the prophets, built into you by knowledge, Holy Spirit will now amplify it. Built into you by, by the teaching and the training of faithful disciples. Built into you by powerful move after move after move of Holy Spirit. I've made you to merge with my work through the ages and merge with my spiritual heavenly kingdom. Now moving into the earth realm. I made you. I've made this remnant. I have made this, this ecclesia to flow in synergistic purposes. The synergistic purposes of the ages. I have made you, I have re resourced you, I have e equipped you for my plan now. It's in the calling breath I put inside you. You have tendency awarenesses. You have tendency awareness I've added into your being. I've added them for this moment. I have sharpened abilities in you with the whetstones of your heritage. I've nuanced every generation differently. Know your difference. Know your calling. Know who you are. Know who you can be. Walk with me. Let Holy Spirit reveal more of who you are. Drink, drink deep from the pools of revelation. Pools of revelation in the past. Pools of revelation I've opened for you. I've made you for a supernatural merging. I've made you to walk with me in deeper, deeper ways. In ever increasing glory. I have made you... I've made your generation to work with angels as no other generation ever has. I have made you to think as reigning heirs. I have made you to rejoice and participate in my greatest harvest. You are uniquely made for this harvest. You've been made to legislate authority from the spirit realm to affect the natural realms. I have placed in you governing tendencies. There's a call within the soul wells of my remnant at this day in this generation to rise to steward your times. I have made and planned you for the merger we decided would be now. Remember a couple of weeks ago the prophetic word about the merger. Relisten. Now begins the merger of Christ's spiritual kingdom in the earth realm. 
with the kingdom of heaven in the spirit realm in ways and levels never seen before, the merger will accelerate a new era of Pentecost. Power and kingdom authority will be seen on earth as never been seen before. Glory presence will fill prepared territories, prepared regions, prepared nations with surge after surge of the king's manifest presence, which will spawn miracles. The enemies of our kingdom will be disoriented and fight with each other resulting in freedoms decreed by the king's ecclesia and assisted by angel armies. For I will surely release my mighty ones to labor with you. My mighty angels are moving to the earth realm. Hear the Father. Hear the heart of the Father today. Hear the, the energizing voice of the great I am. Hear the life that he is declaring. Let your heart resonate with this calling breath within you. Be how I made you be. Think. Embrace my thoughts towards you. Think. Think about who I say that you are. Resist the identity distractions of your enemy. Resist the slander of your nobility. Resist the disrespect of mumbling fools. Resist the cursing of your heritage. Resist the reproach of your faith. Resist the assassination of your character. Resist the distortion of your values. Resist the vilifying of your heart. Speak your authority. You are not orphans. I am your father. Think, ponder, speak your heart. I will defend you. I will resource you. I will rescue you. I will have your back. I will save. I will shut the mouth of your enemies. I will break yokes of bondage. I am your father. You are not helpless. You have never been helpless. You are not hopeless. You have never been hopeless. I am your father. You cannot be who I made you to be. Embracing the identity of liars. Rise up and battle the lies and battle the liars. Embrace my identity of who you are and who you can be and bind the word curses off of you. I have given this generation of children great abilities and great authority to prevail. I have placed my living presence around you and in you. Holy Spirit's home is in you. Come up higher. Merge into the flow of heaven. It's your destiny to reign with me. Flow into the level of grace the world cannot imagine. Function in a favor it cannot quench. Flow into times I've prepared for you to live supernaturally naturally understand who you have been made to be live in it I've made you in my image and my likeness live in it I have given you the king's authority live in it I've given you my promise live in it I've given Holy Spirit to empower you live in it I have given you a kingdom that's unshakable. Live in it. I've given you angel assistance. Live in it. It's time we live the lives of heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. It is time to actively resist the label of fools. The president may say he does not respect us, that we are Nazis, communists, haters of the Constitution. 
our value doesn't come from him. <laughs> Refuse the labeling of fools. Refuse the label of dead religion. Twice dead, plucked up by the root. Root religion does exist. That doesn't mean we have to. We can be alive. Resist the label of a dead religion or a dead church. Refuse the label of demon thinkers, demon-possessed mouthpieces of Baal. Refuse the label. Refuse the label of past failures that have been obliterated by Christ's blood. Refuse the label of sin obliterated by grace. Refuse the label of lying hypocrites in arts and entertainment. Their rejection of who we are does not add one thing to our worth or against our worth. Their labeling is senseless. His declaration of who we are. Resist the labeling of arts and entertainment. Don't, don't embrace it. Revis, refuse the label of lying spirits in education, government, or media. In other words, we are not to wear the label of godless ideologies, period. We are robed in the righteousness of of Jesus Christ. Yes, we are who we are by the grace of God. That's true. But still, we are who we are. Grace isn't a nullifier. It's a verifier of who we are. The loving grace of God is a living force that's, that surrounds His, his children. I like the quote of Jerry Bridges. The same grace that is unmerited is also unstoppable. You can't stop it. His favor, you can't stop it. We must live lives of who we are without apology. Can't just hear awesome revelation of Holy Spirit and, that, and just move on. No, there, there are some revelations, some promises, some benefits that we've got to soak in till it's conscious reality. It's, it's functional truth till we live in it, till it's destiny. We are being invited to participate in family business in ways the heroes of our faith longed to do. The Godhead is saying our generation is made to participate. Generational synergy in energy is compounded to you. It's compounded to you. You're in the generation. There's an invitation to new possibilities that are incredible. There's supernatural assistance moving to help us. That's incredible. I mean, high-ranking authority angels are being commissioned to assist the ecclesia. The seraphim order is sent to assist us. Incredible. Incredible. No other generation. No other generation. No other generation has seen the divisions of angel armies moving to assist it. Multiple divisions, millions in them. Something big has to be happening. We got to press in and gain understanding. We got to pray into that. We got to soak that in prayer and steward the awesome promises of our generation. A worldwide revival is promised. Worldwide revival. That's never happened. Never happened. Been some big ones. That's truly incredible. We can participate through prayer, through 
decrees through worship and through living the great joy-filled life of unashamed heirs. As I prayed into all this this week, I became more and more aware that much of what Holy Spirit's been preparing is contingent on us embracing our identity as heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. I believe that's why Holy Spirit is assisting that identity at a much higher functioning level with great assistance. It's time for the heirs to rise, to rise boldly and do what Christ called them to do, disciple the nations. Paul told the Corinthians something that the ecclesia of our generation needs to understand. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 7 says God's wisdom is something mysterious. It's mysterious, His wisdom. That goes deep into the interior of His what? Purpose. Purposes. His wisdom goes deep into the interior of His purposes. It goes into the womb, the womb of, of His purposes. Remember a couple of weeks ago when the angel handed me a piece of paper saying, it's strategies, it's plans, it, uh, uh, and even secret intelligence for things to come. In other words, it involved purposes of God. The Message Bible, 1 Corinthians 2, 7 reads this way. God's wisdom is something mysterious that goes deep into the interior of His purposes. You don't find it lying around on the surface. It's not the latest message, more like the oldest. What God determined as the way to bring out His best in us long before we ever arrive on the scene. There's something about what God is, is saying to us that, that if we'll lay hold of it, we'll bring out the best in us. And not only that, it will change the world. There are things, there are things in the womb of who He is. Purposes. Intentions, projects in the interior of his being that he has prepared for us, for you, for me, for this generation. That he wants us to receive and walk in freedoms, joys, fulfillments, liberties, gracious favor, rights as heirs, plans, strategies, to win secrets in the future that he's activating from the womb of his, of his wisdom for our moment, for right now, for the ecclesia now, for you now, your identity now. And he's saying, walk with me into the times I planned for you. Reign with me. You, you, you have destiny to live in. Live supernaturally, naturally. We must rise, refusing the labeling of our enemies and live in the defining definition of our God. You're my heirs. Walk with me. Let's change things. The king is saying, walk with me, reign with me. Be who you really are. That's the biblical perspective of our times. Set your mind on that. Set your heart on that. And run into these new times in an anointing like we've never seen, assisted like we have never seen, to do things the king's way 
as heirs of the kingdom. Know who you are. You are very special. You're so important. Those of you online, everyone, if we all rise and say, here, here I am. I'm going to be who I'm supposed to be. I'm going to be who God says I am. You will not label me and you will not shut me down. Singers and musicians, come please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that in this challenging time, we would really understand who we are. I pray, God, that the deep interior purposes that you have in mind for every person here or watching, and of course for the ecclesia, would unfold now as we resist the labeling of the enemy and we embrace the the. <laughs> We embrace the definition of our almighty God, a father who has our back. We bind all fear, all threats. Behold their threatenings. Grant that great boldness would be upon us. And that signs and wonders would rise. Give us a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Pray, God, for the ecclesia here, but all over this nation and world. Rise, be who you are. Hear the intention and purpose of the Godhead for you. It's your moment. It's your time. Rise and reign. As David did in his generation, May it be said of us, we served your purpose in our generation. We didn't back down because it was evil and hard times. We did what you said. Help us to walk in the realms of the supernatural with you. Help us to live supernaturally, naturally. Holy Spirit, mantle us today in the deep wells of who we are. The deep wells of who we are individually. May understanding come that we are here for more than just the natural. There's another realm to walk in. Challenge us to rise in that, Lord, for these times. Come into this room today, Holy Spirit. Go out through the airwaves today, Holy Spirit. Do what I cannot do. But somehow deep inside of each air, may they hear the calling voice of the Father. Be who you are. You really are. You can be who you really are. That the supernatural grace, favor of the kingdom of God grow and expand around us in such a way that we understand that we represent a kingdom and that we represent a king and he's worthy. He's worthy of his heirs rising for the moment. Supernaturally, Holy Spirit, activate the purposes of this generation. Deliberated on by our God. Activate the purposes. You decided for this generation. Do it, holy God. Do it in dreams. Do it in visions. 
Do it in visitations. Do it through the voice of the prophets. We are not orphans. You're our Father. Your grace is multiplying. Release the generational purposes of the ecclesia for this time. We choose, Lord, choose to walk with you. Choose to press into the supernatural realms. Choose to obey you. Choose to represent your kingdom. Hallelujah. May the hosts of heaven help Holy Spirit present this word, this word in all ecclesias, supernaturally, Lord, a defining grace right now. May their purpose come forward. What a privilege, Lord, to serve you. Oh, we honor you. Mm, you're so awesome. Thank you, Lord, that you have our back. Thank you. Enthrone yourself here, mighty one. Enthrone yourself among us. Big God right here. King of kings, set your throne among us. We want you. Hallelujah. Show us more. Speak more. prayer for you is to go out and enjoy whatever Labor Day thing you're going to do is that you understand yes you have a natural life to live but you are God's son and you're his daughter don't ever forget it let no one label you differently amen 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 amen, amen.